there for yours. So it's bloody hot today. Let's see, it's uh, 43 degrees in here. 43 degrees Celsius. That's only with this open only. So some of the heat's getting out through here, but not much. Yep. Definitely no flames today. Total fire there, so. Okay, viewers, this is a um, HPM baton holder. The Series 366 or 366 impact resistant. This came out of our um, old, old uh, pickers up, which has got all the TVs and stuff stored in it. And this um, is the original baton holder. This came out of one of the rooms out of the house, out of our house. And what happens is, um, this is the original one, being there since the house has uh, been here for at least 20 years since the house was last renovated. I think the, um, this plastic, the actual, uh, we never, we, we never ever used CFLs or ever used CFLs. For some reason, this is like, uh, as if it's been damaged with the, um, UV light from the sun or something. Because this has only got a soft hit, but we're cleaning the light bulb, it was all full of dust and stuff. Just, just, every so the light, they tapped the light bulb off to the side and break the bloody, um, bayonet clip off of this, uh, baton holder was easy enough to replace. Luckily I only got one replacement left so I'm going to have to get some more of these. Haven't got any more of these. But the old, um, these old ones are better because the, uh, the actual bayonet part themselves, this fastener on here is actually made of metal, a bit of tin. they never break. Unlike these ones are going to bloody replace the whole thing. Here's this great wall stand. Before I start commencing video, I'm going to open this window. Get some air flow in here. Oh, it's like another here. 45 degrees Celsius, not good for aerosols either. I suppose I kept these below 50 degrees Celsius. Whoops. Yeah, still 43. They should drop a little bit. Yeah, back to the stand. There's a little lock on here. You push this over to the side. And that locks into a little groove in the uh, shaft here, in, the, in there, and that locks it down, and that allows you to um, change the uh, stamp pad over, and re, re ink it. Maybe there's wheels around, I'll give it a, a little bit of a tweak just to free them up. These are these little Genevas here. So when the actual mechanism comes down, it hits these teeth. So the size of the teeth depends on which number hits what, and that advances it. It's like one of these sorts of uh, mechanisms, really. Except when you push down a little, instead of having Geneva's like that, in between, it has these, uh, it has these little teeth here instead. They're pushed, um, that work on against this uh, end uh, number drum. You can have, I think you can put an extra two digits on this one. So it's a six, obviously a six digit. So if I unlock it, press down, you're going really to see that mechanism advance. As it comes back, it'll grab. And you can see that last tooth there is where it's actually grabbing. I'll see if I can get a better shot of this. So watch, keep an eye on this tooth here. This is one that actually advances the um, number drop. So it goes down. 446503, it comes down, that last tooth grabs, and the thumb out of the way, and pushes it over. Simple as that. These ones here don't seem to do anything, it's just this end one that takes priority. If I move it, get this lock undone. There's a little thing on the side here which goes into this little uh, mechanism in here which sets it, which uh, numbers advance. So I set it to advance. Oh, I'll see if I can. No. And does certain numbers. The mechanism still jammed. I'll go by twos. Let's see if by twos works. So we'll click. Seven, eight, and go eight again. So it does two. 
it will do two stamps of the same number and then advance. That's how that thing works. So if I go three, I should do three of the same number and then advance. It's a bit, uh, still got to free it up. It's got a little bit of water in it and it's uh, surface rusted and everything, so it's a little bit sticky and jammy. Two. Four. That should stay four, uh, three times. Five. Third time. Six. Again. Again. And it advances. So you can see how that works. By doing that, it moves this, interrupts this uh, Geneva in here. This two theaters are the moving, inter interacting. It looks like that's about all it can do. That's all it goes up to. So ones, twos, and threes. It doesn't do uh, fours or fives. Depends on how many um, different models. So this must go for, apply for different models on this particular stand. Yeah, that's back to normal now. Yeah? I'm going to keep playing with it because the, um, as I said before, I sort of free up the mechanism. And to, I think to zero it off, you know, lock that down. That moves over and locks it. I should be able to zero it off now. Let's see how easy this is. Zero. Zero. It's a bit hard to do. There's a special way to do it. This need just goes a nine, this first one. It doesn't have a zero on it. There's little teeth in here on these springs that allow the drums only to move one way. So they're the um, little devices that are interacting and stopping me from turning it backwards. So you're gonna go clockwise only on this. Zero it off. It's a bit stiff this one. Gotta move the whole thought, the whole um, six of them just to get them all free up. Move this uh, to never out of the way. Make it a bit easier. There we are, zero it off. How it actually re-inks, the, um, this comes down and clamps and presses and it's always pressed up against the uh, number drums. That's how it re-inks itself. This one here, the, um, here's the last one here. So there's no actually no zero on this last drum here. Here we go, it's working all right. Not the straightest one, but it works. There you go. Alright, I think this can unscrew so you can pull these apart and clean them. A little uh, spring clip in there. And you undo the, uh, these little bolts here and you can strip the whole thing down and clean it. Yeah, but the company's, um, this company is actually called Great Wall Numbering Systems. Is it? Technically this is actually an invoice stamp, that's a proper name for it. I haven't got any uh, ink pads to actually test it on. So it works quite well after I've got a free up and mess around, have it come quite useful. Quite an interesting little device how it works. Very well made for something uh, made in China. Made in Shanghai, so there's a lot of decent uh, quality manufacturing there. Alright. That'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.